Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning back into Derek Brand Productions, where today we are going to be taking a closer look at my 2020 Mustang GT, also known as Hades. We're going to be going through the entire build process from the first day I got it to where it was completely bone stock to where the car currently sits today. I also want to mention I will be explaining why I purchased and installed X, Y, and Z when it comes to the modifications so you guys get the full rundown and where my head was at at the time. You're going to witness this entire process in just a 15-minute video. Video. So if you could do me the biggest favor ever, drop a like up on the video, subscribe to the channel. We are so close to that 200,000 subscriber mark. So if you guys could make that happen, that would be awesome. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take it back to the day I found this 2020 Mustang GT and took it home. April 20th, 2022 was the day I stumbled across this beautiful 2020 Mustang GT Performance Pack 1 10R80 on Car Gurus, and I noticed the car was only an hour away from my house. Now, before we go any further, we have to go and nip something in the butt. The questioning as to why I went with a automatic 10R80 instead of a manual, manual Mustang GT. Well, that's simply because I already own a 700 horsepower 2013 Mustang GT MT82, which is Blucifer. So with already having a manual Mustang, this 10R80 purchase should make sense. So on that day, everything checked out with the car. It had 6,000 miles on it. It's a 401A security smart package, performance package. And essentially, it was everything I was looking for in a 10R80 Mustang. So I bought it. This is going to take us into one of the first modifications I did on the car. And I had to go and spice up the front end. So here here I have an RTR front lip and the reason why I went with the RTR lip over all the other ones on the market is because it slightly resembles the PP1 lip but it has a lot more aggression to it and I personally think it's the best lip you can get. Since the front lip was already going to be installed I just had to go and switch up the front grills. Personally the honeycomb look just does not do it for me. It never has and I don't know why Ford continues to use that design but that's why we went ahead and switched it to the Cervini's upper and lower grills and these by far are top quality and in my opinion one of the best looking grills you can get on a stock bumper paired with the RTR lip. Next up on the list, the car definitely needed a wheel and tire setup. And that's exactly why we went ahead and settled with this peasant wheel and tire setup. The VMSs, I think I paid $2,000 off Craigslist for all four absolute peasantry. And honestly, times are tough. Ramen gets stale. And uh, you know, this is all I could afford at the time. And I wish I could have got a set of welds like all the big guys. But the reason why I had to settle with the peasant setup is so my lady could go ahead and walk around with four sets of welds on her finger. But we won't talk about that. Priorities. But yes, we went ahead and snagged the VMS setup. And considering this was like the first time I ever heard about the brand and I had a black Mustang, I figured the accents on these wheels would go really well with the black paint. So we gave them a try. And needless to say, for just $2,000, I am beyond happy. They work as intended. They look good. And ultimately, I'm just super stoked on the pickup. With the new wheel and tire setup installed on the car, the next day we decided to head to Cecil County Dragway to kind of see how a bone stock 10R80 on a tire performs, and we ended up running a 12 flat. So after that 12-0 pass, I was definitely gassed a little bit. Um, considering the day was 95 degrees out, the DA was horrid, and you know the car was completely bone stock with just a VMS drag pack, 12 flat. I definitely think that's pretty uh, pretty impressive for a car coming straight out the factory. But you know we're definitely going to go back to Cecil County with the boys. And the car is well, as you'll see in this video, done up a little more, and I'm curious to see what we can crank out of it. But in the meantime, we went back to doing some cosmetic mods, and I thought. 
at the time removing the stock headlights to replace them with these Morimoto kind of charger style headlights was going to be a good idea and it didn't really last long you know their build quality is great they look good but it just really wasn't what I wanted and uh, you know we went back to stock shortly after this considering I bought this Mustang for multiple different reasons such as daily driving taking to the track occasionally and just filming content with. I figured it was time to spice up the interior and give it more of a luxurious feel. And that's where our friends over at Dyna Performance come in because they sell these awesome carbon fiber overlays and you know, a lot of people like them, a lot of people hate them, but to me, it just, it kind of like darkens the interior. It gives it a really, you know, prestigious feel with the carbon and the carbon is made in house with you know, a uh, carbon fiber and epoxy. So the quality is out of this world and the fitment's perfect. So I've been very satisfied with my Dyna Performance, um, you know, products and I will be using them for every vehicle. After I finished up the interior, I knew it was time to start knocking out some performance modifications. And the one thing I just could not stand was a cat deleted stock setup on these cars. It sounded like a truck. Um, I was not a fan. And as you can see, I just kicked it good. It deserved it. But this is the stock factory active exhaust with the stock manifolds. Cats were chopped and we went ahead and replaced everything under the car with some LTH 1 and 7 eighths long tube headers and my absolute favorite to this day, my one of one custom valve exhaust from valve exhaust. As you can see, Hades and DBP little etching on there and it just sounds so good and this really did, you know, bump up the car's overall performance, the sound and just the, you know, enjoyment of it. And don't worry, you're gonna hear the car rip and skip with the new exhaust, but since the car was already taken apart, we decided to knock out the full bolt-on process. And here we have our Apex cold air intake. This intake is going to be a fender mount, which I, I really do like the way they look. The build quality on it is awesome, and I've had zero issues out of it. So thank you for sending that out to me, G2G. Paired up with our cold air intake, I went ahead and snagged a ported 18 manifold which I was a little bummed on because this was just like a deal I stumbled across on Facebook the guy bought it brand new and never installed it and I got it half off so I ended up spending $300 on it but the thing I was bummed about is this one is gray and my 2020 manifold that came with the car was all black and personally, I like the all black look better. Not a big deal though, but for someone like me that's super particular in OCD, still to this day rubs me the wrong way. Ciao! 20 minutes later, we have our Apex installed to the manifold. Looks so good. And my favorite thing is just popping my hood at Cars and Coffee for all the Camaro and Mopar guys because half of them don't know what they're looking at and I just say it's single turboed. So we can get away with that and, you know, if they want to run it, we end up running and they still lose anyway to an NA Mustang. But um, another reason why to buy a 10R8050, um, you will wax every other brand out there that's NA as well. Besides like maybe like a old school Z06 because I learned the hard way on that one. That's ridiculous. Ready? Go! Go! Ah. Uh. Anyway, um, the car was pretty much wrapped up, full bolt on, E85, no E85 yet, I lied. Uh, just full bolt on, 93 tune from Palm Beach Dino, and this was our first time starting the car, taking it out, and ripping on it. A little shaky. She's running. Do it again. Has a nice refined noise to it. It's not like blah. With the car all buttoned up, we figured it was time to do the first dig. Needless to 
needless to say, I was stoked with the outcome considering the car was still on 93. I got the car home and I had a package waiting for me from Stang Lights and these things really did transform the rear end of the car because I do not like the red on the black. I do like the Euro style. So we have the Gen 2 Euros, which is a little different because a lot of people thought I'd revert to the Gen 3, but no. To give you a nice little comparison, I installed one Euro on the left and then on the right we have the stock. You know, the red has great contrast, but I just think the Euro on the left side right here, it just looks so good. It, it's fitting. You know, it matches the exhaust tips. It matches the accents on the Peasant VMSs. And overall, I was just super happy with the final product, as you can see here. And yeah, Gen 2 Euros for the win, baby. Figured it was time to get this car on the final step of the NA process. I'm willing to take it. It's already full bolt-on and we were lacking one thing and that was a tune from palm beach dino to run e85 but first i had a mission and that was to take out the neighborhood troll <laughs> Neighborhood Gremlin was eliminated, E85 was loaded with a tune. So let me tell you, the car felt like a night and day difference going to E85. And I want to say with these Coyote platforms, that's what they're notorious for. You're going to pick up anywhere from 40 to 50 wheel, which is huge when you're talking in NA setup. So I highly recommend it and your car will love you for it. Shortly after going E85, sadly, the weather was starting to get a little colder and I didn't have a wheel and tire setup that was, you know, for all purpose driving. I just had the VMSs and the PP1 wheels, but the black on black, not a huge fan of it. That was until I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace that was actually willing to trade with some cash on top for these downforce wheels. And the one thing that really caught my eye with these wheels was the color. I wanted something that was gonna, you know, match, again, the exhaust tips, it was gonna match the Euros, the front headlights, and I don't know, I'm really detail oriented when it comes to that. And I think they did a very good job, unlike the black wheels here. So we got the downforce wheels and I did a little mock up here and I was just so stoked. Cause bam, there they are all installed. Fitment was absolute pristine. And again, I just kind of like the contrast they bring. They're different. I'm always rocking black wheels on all the other cars I have. So this was definitely a change in pace. And just look at this angle. Look at the exhaust tips bouncing off the taillights, the taillights bouncing off the wheels. Mm, that's exactly why I got these. Went and installed two modifications from our friends over at ZL1 add-ons. The first one is their wicker bill for the PP1 spoiler. And here's the outcome on that modification. Personally, I love it. I think it really brings out the performance pack wing and it just gives it a nice effect, a futuristic effect, so to speak, because that's instantly what I think of when I hear S550. The S197 is the last Mustang. This is just like, you know, a hybrid crossbreed of a mercedes mustang and woo doggy after the wicker bill we went and installed this beautiful riced out diffuser and let me tell you boys a lot of people's feathers got ruffled with this one but again i think it's one of those modifications that just suits the s550 and it works i like the look i know a lot of people probably don't but the rear end in my eyes is completely finished and this is the outcome of that. So that's all the modifications added up into one. To wrap up the interior, Dyna Performance sent me out this beautiful flat bottom carbon and leather steering wheel. This thing is game changer, let me tell you. Definitely cop one. Now we're gonna move on to the final modification to where the car stands today and by far my absolute favorite. This modification, it took the car from about a seven and a half, eight 
to easily a nine, nine and a half. And you know, a lot of people might agree with the modification, many might not, but this is going to be my 2020 Mach 1 front end conversion. Bada bing, bada boom, boys. There's the Mach 1 front bumper, and that is going to go ahead and wrap up today's video going from a bone stock 2020 Mustang GT to a heavily modified one in just nine months. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing with bell notifications, drop a like, and we'll see you in the next one.